Yo, Internet Land, it's Bo the Mechanic here again. Check this out. Here's the cylinder we're working on. Bang, hydraulic cylinder. I told you guys I'd work on it, show you guys how it comes apart. I went ahead and yanked it off the machine. Pretty simple. There's a pin here and it's threaded through the top. All cylinders are different. Some have two pins, tops and bottoms. They're usually just shoved in there and they got cotter pins. Real simple. Hydraulic lines. Just make sure they're not under pressure. If you can grab the line and it's not running, you should be able to grab it and bend it around and you should feel that there's no pressure on it. Be careful with that. That can really hurt you. Hydraulics are dangerous. They spray you, they can cut you. Anyway, here's how I yanked it apart. Took the cylinder off, as you can see on the top. She's got two pins there and there. I use this redneck device that I created for myself. It's really nice. Sits in there, lines up, just like that. And you can thread it in or you can thread it out. So I just threaded it all the way out. There you go. Put my gloves on for safety. I don't like my hands when they're dirty. You might have done it. Here you go. Spin this thing apart. There you go. She's free. You see that? There you go. Cap. Pressure's right off. Here's the other part of the cylinder. There you go. Other part of the cylinder. Real simplistic. That's how a hydraulic cylinder works. No more gloves. There's a cylinder, you guys can see it. There's nothing magical. All there is is two holes in there. There's one down in there. There's another one below it. Fluid either goes in one side or in the other. It's a sealed up container. Here's the part that I took off. It's got an O-ring right there. Blang. On the inside, it's got a nylon ring and that's usually what leaks man what you'll usually see leaking on these bastards is they'll be like this fluid will be leaping out of right here they don't usually leak right here every once in a while but they often leak right there that's where the cylinder goes up and down you get the most wear here's the cylinder there's the ramrod as you can see right here basically like piston rings okay it's got a compression piston ring when this thing's shoved in there you can see the inner lock fluid gets pressed this way or that way it's got to go somewhere this is the other one right here. You can see that right there. Same kind of thing. These these wear out sometimes, but not usually. And there's your other nylon seal. So what we're gonna do is, man, I'm really gonna run this up to a hydraulic place up the street, and I'm gonna have them find me a new seal, inner and outer for this bastard. They're gonna probably act like it came from Russia. That's what they always do. The, you know, cylinders are really simple, but somehow they act like, oh, where did that come from? That's from Russia somewhere. Anyway, whatever. So I'm going to get the seal. I'll show you guys a little bit how we put that thing back together. Hey, Internet Land. It's Bo again. I told you guys I'd show you a video on how to repack a cylinder, and I finally got the cylinder back. Uh, last video, I showed you kind of how it comes apart. This thing's been riding around the back of my truck for the past day or two. Anyway, let's show you guys how it rolls. Earlier I showed you guys the cap. This is the top cap. I went ahead and showed you it's got O-rings there, O-rings on the inside here, and on the shaft seal right here. And where they all, most predominantly there where they leak is through this top seal right here. That's where you usually see them slowly weeping fluid out as you're using the cylinders. They usually get a scuff or something on the shaft here. And they'll start to wear a little bit and seep from this area. I took this thing over to the hydraulic, local hydraulic place and they had to find me a fitting and order me a new seal for this, this one right here. I told you guys it would be difficult and they yeah, always have to order it. So they ordered it for me. I didn't want them to put it in but they went ahead and just tapped it in. It's not that big of a deal. You guys can kind of see in there. There's a seal, a, a metal spacer, and then another seal. You can tap those out going this direction and it's pretty straightforward. They all just come right apart and you tap them right back in and then you just take the O-ring, peel it off with a screwdriver and put another one in. 
once again, like I said, they did this for me. I would have done it, but whatever. They charged me 20 bucks to do that for new O-ring. I order it, inners and outers. Anyway, let's put this thing back together. Make sure you clean it off, get all the junk off of it. Like I said, it's been in the back of my truck. Good housekeeping as always, the way of the Lord. Check your rings, make sure they spin around, make sure there's no obvious gashes anywhere. See that ring, it spins. This ring spins. No obvious burrs. Take my little rag and clean up the inside of my cylinder a little bit. Cylinder's fine, it looks like. Go ahead and tap her in. Yeah, look, you there. She's ready to roll. Bottom's in. Handy square gun, this has just got ATF in it. Automatic transmission fluid, I just keep it. I use it for my air tools, so it's always filled with a little bit of ATF, whatever I've got, thin-based oil. Let's see if I can get this biatch to tap in. Make sure you don't cross thread it. I'm gonna grab my little tool. Remember this? Just a piece of plate with a handle. I weld it on. Spin her on. This would be the same if you had a backhoe cylinder, a garbage truck cylinder, a cylinder for a press, or a shop press. Even if you've got one of those, you can rebuild those too. As long as they're not sealed and welded all the way around. This thing doesn't have to be extremely tight. It's just got to be snug. Right there. That's snug. Should tap it. She's ready to go. I'm done. This cylinder is ready to go back to work. Put it back on the truck. Somebody can start making money with it. Show you guys here. Bam, there's your cylinder. Threaded back on. Nothing more to it than that. Pretty simple. Here's another machine that's here. This is like a 2004 Boxer Industries mini loader show you guys all the cylinders are the same can you see there this is only like a one and a half inch cylinder but see it's still got same way it's all built the same it just unthreads see there's one there one there if I had this thing off it'd be the same way here's another one this is for the front on a loader let's see what kind it's got uh, looks like the same way I don't know if you guys can see it but see the pins there a hole right here and a hole right there. So as you can see, they're all the same. The only difference you'll ever see is some of them can spin off, like right here in this little area right here, they'll spin completely off. On bigger cylinders, sometimes they're like that. Basically, there you go.